Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman with Meat Church. Welcome to another episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. This is actually the 26th episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. It is my sixth opportunity to uh, come into your homes and share my love of outdoor cooking on the Traeger with you. Uh, we're here in our outdoor kitchen. It might not look like we're outdoors, but that's all open air, just solid walls behind us. So uh, this is where we get to cook all the time. And uh, we're super excited, uh, like I said, to be coming into your homes uh, to share a fun hour with you guys. So let's talk about you know, what we're going to do today and, and kind of what Traeger's got going on. We've got a really exciting uh, evening planned. If you know me, you know that I love to put a smoked element in everything that I do. That starts with a cocktail and we'll go all the way to dessert. Today we're going to do three things. We're going to do my take on a Paloma, which of course is going to be a smoky Paloma. Um, then we're going to do uh, pig shots, which is a great game day appetizer. We're going to talk about everything Traeger's doing around game day in just a minute. But this is a really easy appetizer for you guys to make. I mean, honestly, you could turn it into a meal. Uh, they're pretty hearty, easy to make, and a huge hit. I've never met one person that said they didn't like them. And then we're going to finish up with my famous grilled oysters, which I'm very excited about. Uh, it's really unique. Um, it's not oyster season here in Texas yet, so we've sourced in some amazing oysters from up north. Uh, you guys can use your favorite oyster for that. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But um, what's Traeger had going on? So this is the middle of their game day content right now. If you're not following Traeger on Instagram, you need to be. There's lots of cool content on there. Uh, Chad Ward has been hosting an amazing show uh, every Tuesday night. Um, Chefs and Champs, really cool thing if you haven't checked that out. But Traeger's been giving away a ton of stuff. Right now the focus is home gating. Uh, Football looks a lot different for a whole lot of people right now. Fortunate for us in Texas, we can actually go to games, uh, but for a lot of you, that's not even an option. So home gating is really a big focus. And you know, I won't spend too much time on it, but I was asked to kind of show you guys our setup here. Uh, we've obviously got a pretty good outdoor setup with big covering. We try to cook all our meals out here, uh, but we can also watch football uh, back on the TV back here. So our setup is, uh, is pretty simple. So it's about cooking and hanging out here at the bar and watching football. But a little bit about me and Meat Church, in case you don't know who we are. Uh, so I'm fortunate enough to be a, a Traeger barbecue ambassador. Um, our brands go hand in hand. A lot of Traeger dealers out there carry the Meat Church products as well. But we like to say that we do two things. We sell the most amazing uh, barbecue seasonings on the planet. We've got about 20 barbecue products that we sell. Uh, and then the other thing we do is kind of whatever I do. So I love to teach barbecue. I do a lot of uh, outdoor cooking classes. I teach a ton right here in my outdoor kitchen. Obviously, those are kind of on hold in 2020 with everything that's going on. Uh, that's why I'm excited to work with Traeger to get to come to you guys. And they're my creative outlet to uh, share my passion for cooking uh, with you all since we can't do it here live. We're in Waxahachie, Texas, which is just about 30 minutes straight south of downtown Dallas. Uh, we've got a, a flagship barbecue supply store here in uh, downtown Waxahachie. I'm um, actually tomorrow on Friday the 2nd, I'm going to be in my shop all day. Uh, we're launching a cutting board line that a lot of people are traveling in uh, to take advantage of because we're only selling them in our shop. And I'm actually going to be in the store all day tomorrow. Uh, if you buy a prime brisket from me or if you bring your own brisket in, I'm going to teach you to trim it, but I'm going to trim it for you. So bring your own brisket and come see me tomorrow. Have a cold beer. We'll hang out and talk barbecue. But enough about that. It's time to get into uh, what we've got going today. So. Um, you know, I told you the three things that we're making. Um, the pig shots I'm really excited about because we're getting to use some Snake River Farms meat. Uh, you guys probably know Snake River Farms, a huge partner of Traeger, but you probably know them from the beef side. They're known for their amazing Wagyu beef. Um, but today we get to cook Snake River Farms bacon. So you know that's not going to be bad. And uh, we've got some of these pig shots going right now back here on the Traeger Ranger, but we're going to put some together as well together. And then hopefully you guys will make these this weekend because I promise you're going to love them. And I said earlier, I got a little bit extra of this bacon and I'm not mad about it because this stuff is epic. So let's get started. We're going to start with a cocktail. Uh, we're going to start with a Paloma. Um, I've been making this for a while. Um, I also work with Yeti and I, I made a smoked Paloma for those guys earlier in the year. And I thought it'd be cool to share with you guys. So I said a few minutes ago, I like to incorporate a smoke element with everything that I do. And the Traeger, you know, obviously the versatility going from grilling to smoking to baking or whatever you want to do. Um, I learned this tip from my buddy Casey with Top Shelf in Utah, amazing mixologist. So if you don't follow Top Shelf Utah, you should. 
Um, if you like cocktails, they can really help you out. But what we did today was we took some citrus. So we took grapefruits and limes uh, to make the Paloma. So a Paloma is grapefruit juice uh, with tequila, a little bit of club soda. And so we're gonna put a little bit of a twist on it. So what I did, and I'll just show you this, was I took a grapefruit and sliced it in half. And then I took Traeger's Smoke Simple Syrup, which is this right here. This is awesome. I love this in the pecan old fashions, but I just poured some of this in a bowl and then I brushed it directly on uh, to, the, to the grapefruit. So this is gonna add a little sweetness, but honestly, it's gonna help get some char. And what we did was we put these in the Traeger at uh, 450 degrees, you could even go 500. You don't have to be right on that number, but I'm trying to char them, get smoke in them and to get that char. And you know, Casey taught me to kind of put these out on the edge, uh, edge of the grill. So when I'm inside the grill, I'm kind of right here on the edge and I rotate them a couple times and we got them, we got them nice and charred. I mean, you can even see it on the outside of the peel. But then from here, what we do is we squeeze these and you're gonna want to strain them because a lot of pulp is gonna come out of this. This is a lot of work, but it's really worth it because I like the smoky flavor of it. We did the same thing with the limes. And so we've gone ahead and, and squeezed that out into, um, into some, some little bowls here so that I can, I can make the cocktail a little bit quicker. So I don't use shaker cups, I just use Yeti, little Ramblers, just a 10 ounce one, it's great for cocktails. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got two ounces of grapefruit juice. We've got an ounce of lime juice. I'm gonna go with just a little dash of the uh, simple syrup. I love the sweetness of this. My favorite tequila, Codigo tequila. It's the George Strait tequila. We've cooked for these guys a few times. Two ounces of this, but you know, who likes to measure tequila? Let's just call that two ounces. And then we're gonna top it with a little bit of club soda. Reason I don't use a shaker cup is I use the mag lid and I close it and then I just shake that. It's one less thing to do. <sighs> Super refreshing. And I'm not normally a grapefruit guy, but I love this. Love it. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Man, that's good. You can also add Grand Marnier to it. Uh, that's called a treehouse. Troy Aikman taught me that. Uh, that's really good as well. That's super good. All right. I'm being told it's time to move to the more main events. All right, let's make these pig shots. What is a pig shot? A pig shot is where we're gonna take, we're gonna take some sausage. We're gonna slice it into some small discs. We're gonna cut bacon in half and build a little wall around that sausage. Uh, and we're gonna make a cream cheese mixture that we're gonna pipe in it and we're gonna cook them for like 45 to minutes to an hour at 350, uh, depending on the thickness of your bacon. So, you know, it's pretty easy. Let's start this out. We've got a block of cream cheese. Um, let's see here. We've got a cup of shredded cheese. You can use your favorite cheese. Uh, we're using a Monterey Jack with jalapeno in it because we're in Texas. We're adding green chilies to it. Um, the recipe in the Traeger app, uh, we, you know, I wrote this recipe. I like to smoke green chilies. Um, you can also buy the canned, which I want to show you what that looks like. Some people don't like to make everything from scratch. So here's a can of diced green chilies. It's four ounces. You want to use somewhere from half to all this, depending on your taste. We're going to put half of it in now and show you that. But you can go either way. Uh, we're going to put a tablespoon of chili powder. And then I'm gonna use our all-purpose, uh, which is honey hog, and we've got two tablespoons of that. And you're just gonna mix it up. Now we'd let the cream cheese soften, it's been sitting out for a little bit, so hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's, yeah, it's pretty soft. We're just gonna mix this up real thoroughly. There's gonna be a trivia question uh, for a great prize, by the way. I should have mentioned this at the beginning. But in any case, fire away your questions. Hopefully you know about that by now. Answer, ask questions. 
uh, put them in. The, they're going to go in the comments, obviously. And then I've got Corey, my buddy here, Robinson Barbecue on Instagram. He's going to read me those questions, and I'll try to answer all the questions I can here. If there's something I don't answer, I'll try to go back and answer those on Facebook and YouTube. But pay attention. There's going to be one huge prize. One winner tonight is going to win a Traeger Ranger and this awesome Traeger flag for your home getting set up. And let me tell you, this isn't a cheap flag. This is like multiply. This thing is like thicker than a tent. So super nice flag. All right, while I'm mixing this, let's do some questions. Does Matt make his own sausage? Does Matt make his own sausage? This is store-bought. Let me get to that in just a second. Uh, we can make our own sausage. We have this made with meat gear uh, that, we, that we use that, um, that we can uh, we have a mixer, we have a stuffer, we can make our own sausage. That's a big thing to do in Texas. But Meat Church isn't a restaurant. We basically do events and things like that. So we can make sausage for an event, but you know, it's not something we have to make like super regularly. But we're going to have a sausage video coming out this fall. What kind of sausage is that? The question is, what kind of sausage is this? We're skipping ahead a little bit. That's, so this is jalapeno beef. So in Texas, we love jalapeno. It's not too hot. You can use any sausage you want, like anything. Uh, but you know, I want anything I'm gonna do. We like a my my flavor is a southwestern flavor, so I'm gonna go with a Texas sausage. Um, I like using a jalapeno cheddar if it doesn't have too much cheese in it that will melt out of the floor of this. Um, but you can use anything you want. Uh, what pellets are you using? So we're using apple pellets today. Um, I like how apple pairs with pork. Um, man, we're getting a lot of questions that come in before oh, we and explain. Then, and then for the drink too, for the grapefruit. So. Not too, so the, the question was, what did we use on the drink? We're using the same pellet today because we've got it loaded up for pig shots, but I mean, you could use whatever you want. Let me give you a little pellet lesson, in my opinion. If you want a lot of smoke, use an oak, uh, use a hickory, use a Texas beef, uh, the wild game blend. If you want lighter smoke, use a pecan, or like really light smoke, use alder, maple, or a fruit wood. So just kind of pick whatever you want to pair with it. You probably don't want to over pair this, but it's not that big a deal. I'm not going to, you know, these weren't in there that long. They were in there. 30 minutes, right? So it's not going to be like that smoky. But if you want less smoke, go with the lighter pellet. If you could only use one pellet for the rest of your life, what would it be? If I could only use one pellet for the rest of my life, it would probably be hickory. That's that's the best all-purpose. However, we're in Texas, and beef is king, and it's cooked with oak here, so I'm also a big oak fan. Are you on keto? I am not on keto. I have formerly been, but I'm down to my fighting weight, so I've been allowed to get off keto. And this is not keto, so I'm going to eat it. When I go to do the oysters, I'm going to need that butter. But later. Okay, let's get back into this. So we're going to make the, we're going to slice these up, and you're just going to go, um, let's get rid of the end, and you don't want to be too thick with this. I mean, we're, I don't know, quarter inch. You might go half inch at the most. Like, I wouldn't go any more than this, and here's why. When you put the bacon around it, I want to leave a lot of room for the filling. So, it, you know, there's no magic answer. It's just kind of what you want to do. I'm just going to slice one of these. Might be tough for you guys to see, but there is a lot of jalapeno in that. This is super good stuff. Could you use honey hog hot instead of honey hog, or would it be too hot? Well, the question was, could you use honey hog hot? Absolutely. This reminds me of making jalapeno poppers. We put seasoning and cream cheese with everything we do. If you love jalapeno poppers, this is really not that much different. You're just going with a different vessel. You're going with sausage and bacon instead of the jalapeno boat. But I would use honey hog, honey hog hot, D's nuts, honey pecan, our holy voodoo, our gospel, our holy gospel, any of those work. But I never, ever, ever go with plain cream cheese. Once you season the cream cheese, especially with our honey rub, I mean, it's, it's a game changer. What's your favorite meat church rub and why? What is my favorite meat church rub and why? It's currently holy voodoo, but that's like the whole world's favorite one. That's, uh, I've got a lot of favorites. Uh, holy cow, my first rub, near and dear to my heart. Uh, very Texas beef rub. Honey Hog was our second seasoning, so this is really popular. Uh, the Gospels are both really good, but currently uh, it seems like Holy Voodoo is good on everything, so that's, uh, that's an easy answer right now. When are you going to be on the Joe Rogan Experience? <laughs> when am I going to be on the Joe Rogan Experience? Well, Black Rifle Coffee just filmed there, another Texas company. Uh, we got to go down and take Joe uh, a 1300 about a month ago when he moved to Texas, so we're, we're waiting on the call. Traeger, call call Joe and tell him to have us on. All right. 
I already cut this bacon open um, because I don't like to use my chef knife to open packages, so I cut it open. So I'm just going to pull a few slices out here. This is going to be Matt designed the outdoor kitchen yourself. Any fire suppression systems? Did Matt design the outdoor kitchen himself? Um, all right, so uh, a company called um, Lazy River built my outdoor pool, kitchen, everything. And the only thing I did was I drew this wall and this wall. I had this idea that I'd have a four wall structure. I wanted two solid back walls with counters, but that was it. Everything else was really the eye of Mark Davis, the designer. So I'm, I'm not that good. Um, fire suppression systems, we have fire extinguishers. There's no like central system, but we have fire extinguishers. While we're getting questions, I'm gonna cut this bacon in half. Would it help to put the bacon in the freezer a few minutes to make it not flop over? Great question. Would it help to put the bacon in the freezer? You want bacon as cold as possible, and you're about to see why. So, you know, we're teaching a class outside. Luckily, the weather's cooling off, but it's still warm here in Texas. So this is, this is being okay right here. This is also thick bacon, I'll say that. So with some bacons, if, don't go buy a cheap bacon. If you buy, like, the cheapest bacon store, it's going to be real thin. It's going to fall over. That's what we're looking for, a little cup like that. So I would like to have the bacon straight out of the fridge. Uh, or, you know, heck yeah, put it in the freezer for a few minutes to firm it up for sure. So we're just wrapping it around this disc. The bacon's overlapping, and I'm putting the toothpick through both pieces of bacon. And I'm just going to make a few of these because we've already made some that are cooking. They're going to take about 45 minutes to cook, so we put them on about 15 minutes prior to going live so that we can eat them. But I want to show you how simple this is. I mean, it's a little tedious, but I'm telling you, um, this is... This is one of those things that you make that I've been making this. I wrote this recipe five years ago, and it's not unique to me. It's just my take on it. Uh, but this is one of those things that you make, and no one says that sucks, and I don't want another one. Like, everybody's going to eat it. So make this this weekend when you're watching football. What's your normal weekday meal throw down for the family? What's my normal weekday meal? So contrary to popular belief, it's not barbecue. Uh, I do try to cook everything outside, or my meats outside at least. We do a lot of like we pick a grilled meat and make two vegetables and a starch every night. So not trying to be plain vanilla. Um, we do make a lot of stuff for recipe testing and then naturally my family gets to eat that. But um, trying to balance out how much bad stuff like this I make. I often get asked how do I not weigh four or five hundred pounds. Well, I, I want to live. So I try to be smart about it. So I make a ton of this stuff and I'll eat one of them. I'm not going to eat ten of these. And you know we grill a lot of meats on our Traeger. Uh, and then we, you know, do a lot of cast iron vegetables uh, and a potato or something like that, and usually wine. Is that hat available yet? Great question. Is this hat available yet? This, my friends, is out of the fall collection, which if you come to my store tomorrow, is releasing in store tomorrow. It will release on meatchurch.com. I don't know, maybe within the next week, but not tomorrow. So if you're local or if you're not, we've got word someone's driving up from Florida tomorrow, so I don't care if you live out of state. I want to hear that excuse. And don't tell me you got to work. It's COVID. You're working from home. Take your laptop in the car and come see us tomorrow. Now, this is, uh, this is our hunting hat that's coming out pretty soon. We're pretty stoked about so uh, you can buy this tomorrow. You can actually buy a lot of new hats tomorrow. So I'm stuffing these. Uh, you know, I'm going to stuff this to just about even with the top of the bacon. And this is going to be the most time-consuming thing we do today. Apologize for the flies out here, but I tell everybody, the flies know the address of the meat church. They're no dummies, so nothing you can do about it. Flies got to eat, too. Did you pre-cook that sausage? Good question. Did I pre-cook this sausage? No, but this sausage is fully cooked from the store. This is not raw. That's a great question. I can't believe I didn't cover that. This is like a lot of smoked sausage you buy in the grocery store. It is cooked already, so we're simply heating it up. So sausage cooking tip. If you were just cooking this link of sausage, it'd take no more than 45 minutes at 250 to keep it from uh from crinkling up uh but it's it's already cooked i mean you know i can just take these i can eat them like that and they're good does a ranger create the same flavor as a large traeger does a ranger ranger create the same flavor as a large uh traeger yeah so it's still a pellet grill um you got your pellet hopper over here it's obviously much smaller but when this thing started up it smoked you know just like any other Traeger. So yeah, I love it. I mean, I don't, I don't personally cook huge cuts on it. I love to sear steaks. Uh, love to take it when we're doing portable things. But yeah, it's great. You'll see in a minute how good they look. Someone asked, could you make that with kielbasa? 
Could you make this with kielbasa? 100%. Again, your favorite sausage. You pick whatever sausage you want. You can make it with a dang hot dog if you want, I guess. Okay, I'm going to put these four. Oh, I forgot one thing. I got to top these. We're going to top these with more honey hog. I mean, look, this stuff is so good. I'm going to eat it directly out of your hand. That's what my kid does. Okay, I'm going to pick these up. I'm just going to go ahead and put them directly on the Traeger. Um, I don't have room on the Ranger. Our recipe is to cook these for 45 minutes at 350. This one's set up at 375 because that's what we're going to do the oysters on. So I'm putting this one on a grill that's a little bit hotter, but that's okay. We're not actually going to eat these on camera anyway uh, because these are going to finish after we're done. Um, I normally like to put these on like a, a grate. If you watch my pork belly recipe, I put these on like a on like a, um, a a cooking grid, like a baking cooling rack type thing. But since I'm only cooking four, I'm not that worried about it. But if I was cooking 15 or 20, I would put them on a grid rack. That way, just one time in, one time out. Okay, they're in, and off we go. I'll set this to the side. When do the meat church classes start up again? When do the meat church classes start up again? Another amazing question. So here's the deal. My outdoor space right here, we host 40 people. We try to make them really exclusive. It's not a huge class. Our state just opened to 75%, so that's good. The problem is it's a pretty small area. And I'm itching to do class. I haven't done class here since January, I think. And we get, how many emails we get a day? Kate says we get 50 emails a day wanting to know, I think we get 100, about when we're going to do class. No, we really want to do it. The problem is I don't have room to spread 40 people out. Um, since my wife is not watching, we turn most of this backyard into a kitchen. It just doesn't have the space to spread you out far enough. With that said, I think we've come to agreement with a couple of my buddies um, that we want to do a wild game class, and we'll probably do it the first week in December, and you know, we'll tell you the risk associated with it, and hopefully you come, but it's going to be awesome. So I don't know. Maybe beginning of December, we'll see. Might do something quicker. kind of depends on how things go. So wear your masks, and let's keep the numbers low so that we can open up and have everybody together. What's your go-to recipe if you want to impress guests? What's my go-to recipe if I want to impress guests? Probably chicken fried steak. <laughs> chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes fried in there. I don't know. I got a lot of them. That's a hard question. I can't. That's, that's tough for me. All right. Let's move to oysters while these cook. But I put those pig shots in, so I want to check on these other ones uh, and see kind of how they're doing right now. By the way, here's my setup here today. I've got my Ranger uh, powered by my Goal Zero Yeti. Uh, so it's not plugged in. And you might be asking yourself, like, well, why don't you just plug that in, Matt? You're in your outdoor kitchen. Well, I had to use my plug for my hair dryer to get ready for, uh, for this set. So, yeah. So, anyway, I had to use my portable unit. Plus, Dudley did it, and I had to, I had to one-up him. Yeah. Whew. I'm going to turn this down a little. We're, we're at 350, but they're looking good already. So... We stuffed these a little, little much. You see the, you see everything oozing out of that. Some of these other ones were good. You live and learn. This one's, you know, these first couple got a little too much cream cheese, but the rest of them look great. Um, I like to finish when the bacon looks right, and so these are getting very close. Close that back up. It's time to get on to oysters. All right, let me grab my oyster stuff. You can just grab two of them. All right, so I mentioned uh, it's not Texas Gulf oyster season yet, but let me talk about that. I like oysters of all types. I like them raw. Uh, I like them grilled, you know, Rockefeller. I need that knife too, by the way. Hopefully it's in there. Sorry, we didn't have all our oyster stuff out. So with grilled oysters, um, I like to, you know, you'll probably see this if you, if, you, if you look 
on the app or if you look uh, on our website on meatchurch.com at our recipes, they're big oysters. And so a lot of the pictures you see of us, they're, they're really big when we put them in the grill. Those are usually Gulf oysters that we get here in Texas. You can also get really good ones out of Alabama. Um, but look, use your favorite oyster. Like some people up north that are, I'll just say oyster snobs, they're probably thinking, or, or maybe like on the, in the Pacific Northwest, think, I don't want Texas oysters, that's fine. Uh, use any oyster you want. The reason I like a Gulf oyster is they're huge, and that makes it great. That's great to grill with. Uh, today's oysters are much smaller, but they're far superior uh, in taste. And so uh, we've got a local seafood purveyor, uh, Atkins Seafood here in Waxahachie, and the owner, Trace, sourced some for me. Um, he got me some amazing oysters. They're called Savage Blondes, uh, which I thought was a great name because that reminds me uh, of my wife, and so I thought she would like that. So anyway, I'm gonna pull some out here. So we've got some, they're sitting in ice and the ice is starting to melt because it's, it's, uh, it's warm here in Texas, like I said. And so you can see by, you know, look at my hand, they're much smaller. Like these are, I don't know, probably half the size of Gulf oysters. So, but like I said, you get whatever oyster you want. Uh, these came, I think, outside of the Boston area, uh, but they're really good. So we've shucked a bunch already. And I just remembered, we had more pig shots to put on that we made in advance. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right. Are there any non-meat church seasonings that you like? Are there any non-meat church seasonings that I like? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. So. You know, I often tell people, we're selling a $10 product, and there's enough air for us all to breathe. Um, I'm cool if people try other things. I try to have a meat trick cheese seasoning to cover most of what you do, but I'm never going to be all things to all people. So, like, I use a lot of Paul Prudhomme stuff from uh, New Orleans, uh, the late chef there, because that's just something I'm never going to make. Like, I, I don't have a blackened seasoning, so I'll buy things like that. Um, you guys are probably interested in the barbecue seasonings. Obviously, Traeger's got a big line. Um, use my buddy Chad Ward's Whiskey Bent. Um, but, you know, we mostly use our stuff most of the time, and I'll try other things. If you come to our shop, we have other seasonings. Um, they're all my friend's stuff, so, like, how to barbecue right, Malcolm Reed, I've got his stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I love trying other things, but more times than none, I'm grabbing mine because I can find a use for mine. And it's cool for me to figure out a new use for something so that we can teach that to other people. So I'm going to take these oysters in a towel with an oyster knife. I'm going to reach in the point here, and I'm going I'm to shuck them. Um, just shuck a few of these to show you how to do it. And once I've got them kind of popped, key here, I like to be real careful because I want to maintain all the brine in the oyster, especially since I'm grilling them, so try not to spill that. Any tips on shucking oysters while you're doing it? Any tips on shucking oysters? Don't stab yourself. Uh, I like to use a towel. Don't, don't press down like this to where it can slip off the oyster and go in your hand because that's going to happen. Um, you know, reach in, find that pry point, work it. You know, there's a lot of videos on the internet, but um, it, once you get the hang of it, it's a fairly quick process. But what you don't want to do is this. You don't want to push down hard like this because you're it's going to slip off and it's going to go in your hand. So I'll, I'll usually grab a towel and kind of come in at the side. So if I miss, I'm not going down into my hand. And I'll find that pry point and just twist it just like that. So I've got it loose. Then what I do is I go across the underneath of the top shell so I've released it to cut that away. But the other thing I like to do, I like to go underneath and make sure it's completely released so that when it's cooked, I can just get the whole thing out of there. So that that now is floating in all that brine. I didn't lose anything. I mean, this thing looks epic. And I know we're gonna grill them, but I had to. Big fan of the Savage Blondes. So the, the cool thing about these, these come to a point where you can just like easily see what you're doing. But you got that pry point. 
underneath to detach it. I got a little messy with that one, which I don't like to do. These are loaded with brine. Very, very important to keep all that brine. You're going high heat on the grill. Here we go. Last one. When I hear a beer cracking in my backyard, I just did. We're gonna get these on, we're gonna pull those pig shots off. They're pretty close to being done. Okay. That's it, so that's enough of those. I've got quite a few here, so I've, I've, I've loosened it from the shell. Beautiful again. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. So my recipe, we're gonna put a little bit of breadcrumbs on these, just for a crunch. This, you know, anything I do is optional. It's not the end all be all. What we're gonna do with these is we're gonna cook them normally for five minutes. These may cook a little bit quicker because they're smaller. What you're looking for, you're looking for the, and I learned this from a amazing seafood purveyor here in Dallas. You're looking for the edge of these to start to pucker. When it starts to pucker, you're done. Big teaching moment. When you see that coming up, you're done. If you overcook it, all this brine's gonna be gone and it's just gonna be really dry. So I err on the lighter side. So the recipe says five minutes. I don't think these are gonna take five minutes because again, they're a little smaller. I'm putting a little bit of panko breadcrumbs in here for a crunch element. So the overall of what we're gonna do, we're putting these in like this. I'm probably not gonna put all these in at once. Probably do a couple batches. And after they've been in for a couple minutes, I'm going to put some butter in them. Uh, to melt, and I'll talk to you about the butter in a minute. When they come off, we're gonna to top them with jack cheese, a little bit of finely diced green onion, and then a touch of barbecue sauce. We're gonna use Traeger Sweet and Heat, and they're gonna be a great, that's why we call it a barbecue oyster, barbecue grilled oyster. Okay, before we put those on, I know these are done. I'm gonna pull these off real quick so they don't, we don't overdo these. So I'm gonna take for granted that you guys know this tip, but I put on a cotton glove that I get at just, uh, you know, Harbor Freight, little local hardware store, and then pull this rubber glove on top, a latex on top. That way I can feel what I'm doing. These are not very big. Okay, gonna put these on this uh, brand new Meat Church cleaver cutting board with our uh, mascot Mito Bandito on it. You could do this with tongs as well, but I think this is gonna be a little bit easier. Questions? All right, this is gonna work out good because this will allow these to cool because these are gonna be just insanely hot. So those can sit there and chill out. All right, we're ready to put these on. Uh, let me get some butter ready. So on the app, the uh, recipe calls for you to make a compound butter, which is, is quite simply get a really good uh, butter, like a high grade butter, and let it soften. So let it sit at room temperature for a while. And you can put whatever you want in it. You can put herbs in it. You can put green onion, garlic. Um, you can put barbecue seasoning in it. One of the things we like to do with these oysters is a barbecue butter. And years ago, I collaborated with Banner Butter out of Atlanta, which is the most amazing tasting butter uh, that, that I've ever had for grilling uh, because it has a high milk fat in it so it, it holds up to heat really well. And anyway, we collaborated and, and uh, they make a barbecue butter that actually has Meat Church Honey Hog in it. So if you don't buy this from those guys, you don't have to. Uh, you can soften up a butter and put, you know, a tablespoon of, 
you know, however much honey hog you want to put in it. Um, you, you roll the butter up like in parchment paper into a log, you tie it off with twine, you put it in your refrigerator, your freezer, harden it up, and you cut off discs of butter. But Banner makes it really easy for me, and they make this butter, which is, uh, which is great, and I'm just gonna just kind of scoop it in as these are cooking. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut some up real quick before I throw these oysters on. Actually, I'll throw it on, then I'll cut it up because we're gonna have a few minutes. All right, so we're at 375. Probably do half this pan because uh, there's a lot going on here. Cube time. Trying to keep all this brine in here as best we can. It's tough to do sometimes depending on the shape of the oyster, of the shell. question is salted or unsalted butter. I mean, that's up to you. Uh, in a lot of cooking, I use unsalted butter because I've got so much salt and everything else, but that's sort of per personal preference thing. A lot of people only use salt if they're baking, but it's kind of whatever you want to do. And these oysters are pretty salty anyway, so I, I would normally probably go unsalted. But, you know, this, this is definitely going to be salty with everything that's in it. So I probably should have got a spoon to do this. This is going to be the messiest thing I do all day. Corey's running the time for us. Uh, I'm going to open it up and, you know, I encourage you not to just keep your head in a recipe. You know, you need to be cooking, looking for the visual cues more than anything. So that's super important. So we need to be watching these oysters and see what they're looking like. What do we have? How long? Two minutes. I'm just going to keep doing a couple quick checks. What Traeger would I recommend for a beginner? I would recommend trying to get at least into the D2 series. So there's Pros, Ironwoods, Timberlines. Go with what your budget can afford, but a Pro of either size is a great entry point, uh, particularly the new ones. I love them. I'm going to go ahead, since we're near three minutes, I'm going to drop butter in. I'm going to drop butter in the ones that are, like, have less brine in them. Or that, at least that's how I'm going to start to attack them. And that butter can just melt in there while it's continuing to cook. You might be saying, it looks unhealthy. Probably is, but it's gonna taste good. I always tell people, I'm not here to help you lose weight. I'm here to help you enjoy life. Okay, I'm going to close it back up. I'm going to turn this ranger off. I would encourage you to be more prepared with your butter than I was, but uh, anyway, we just forgot one ingredient and had to get it ready. So normally I'd have this all portioned out. And what I could do is I can go on the bottom shelf and start cooking the last batch while those are going. Won't hurt anything. How long? 
All right, we're at four minutes. They're kind of starting to pucker. These aren't, this one is. What's my culinary background? I'm not classically trained. I've been cooking my whole life outdoors and had the good fortune of meeting a ton of people that helped me in my outdoor cooking journey. Uh, so I used to say I was self-taught, but that's far from true now, uh, considering all the people that I mentor with and are traveling I've done and things like that. But I did not go to culinary school. And I don't need you to call me a chef because I think it's kind of silly. That's funny. You call me a doctor, I've been to school for eight years, but I don't need to go to school for nine months to be called a chef. I think we're at five minutes. We, all right, so I think we're near five, but let me look. So what we've got here is a hotel pan full of kosher salt. I'll explain that. Okay, before I top these, I'm gonna go ahead and butter these other ones. I'm using the bottom two shelves. Oh. I do use the top shelf, but when I'm doing stuff for video, I want you to be able to see, so I take the top shelf out. Uh, hang on. Let me, let me butter these last couple. What is the best beer, what? To accompany oysters? Oh, Miller Lite. I've tried like 300 beers and it's Miller Lite. Tastes great. A couple of these look a little light on butter, so we're gonna help them out. Okay, we'll let those go. So I'm gonna finish these while these are going. So I've made a bed of kosher salt here, and what that does is that takes this super hot oyster and gives it a nice, honestly, two things. It gives it something to rest on and then a great presentation, although I got it a little bit dirty. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some more, um, we're using a, a jack cheese with a jack cheese with jalapeno in it. It's not going to be hot. We're just going to top these a little bit. Make these your own, put whatever toppings you want. Uh, a lot of times, instead of doing the uh, breadcrumbs, we'll use bacon for the crunch element. You know, bacon's always good. But I'm just going with the original that we have on the app. Um, if you guys don't know this, kind of mentioned it earlier, but all these apps are on TraegerGrills.com. They're also in the app, which is much easier. I even tell my friends that aren't smart enough to have Traegers that uh, they should have the Traeger app anyway. So we're going to use uh, the Sweet and Heat, and this is a big, big, you know, big pour, and I don't want to. I don't want to go too crazy on it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try pouring this in a bowl and spooning this in real quick. Cause I just need a little bit. Otherwise, I was afraid I was gonna make a huge mess. You eat with your eyes first, so presentation is always important to us here.
So in just a minute, I'm going to ask you a trivia question where you can win that Ranger and the flag. So get ready for that. Let me check these bad boys. Oh, yeah. OK, I'm going to go ahead and pull these. Honestly, this is going to be my favorite class because this is the best. You know, and I know coming into this class, like less people will probably come to watch it because like, oh, oysters. But it's probably the best thing we've made so far. Okay. A little tight fit, that's okay. All right, let's cheese these. Yeah, let's let's fire off some questions here while I'm doing this. Will the cutting boards be available online in the future? Will the cutting boards be available online? Right now they're an in-store item only, and uh, some people have kind of been upset about that. But you know, when we created this barbecue supply shop, we're trying to make it a destination place. So there's always going to be some items in it that are in-store only to get you to come out there. Uh, and we don't ship items that large. You can go to RosewoodBlocks.com and custom order a board from Tyler. Uh, you're gonna have to wait on it a little bit and you need to get your Christmas orders in by I think the end of this weekend. He's that far backed up because uh, he's that popular. But I don't know, we may ship them one day. I won't say never, but right now they're just got, they're in store items. I'm making chorizo chili tonight. I have all of your rubs. Which seasoning would you add to the chili? What seasoning for chili? So it's like the worst kept secret ever that our chili kit's gonna come out soon. So you need a, you need a, a traditional chili seasoning but then I would either go holy cow, which is salt, pepper, garlic, basically, or holy voodoo. Uh, and just make sure with your chili you don't put beans in it. Because that's not chili. That's Yankee soup. And that's okay. It's okay if you like Yankee soup. But in Texas, beans give you gas. And I don't, it's not what we're looking for. Have you ever cooked a small whole hog on the Traeger? Have I cooked a small whole hog? Absolutely. Go and, and if you want, go back just a month ago, Clarence, CJ, uh, did a whole hog on his in Traeger Kitchen Live just about a month ago, buddy of mine from Houston. Uh, so just scroll back, uh, go to either YouTube or Facebook and scroll back and you'll see those. Now I'm lastly, I'm topping these with just a little bit of green onion. Keep the questions coming. How big of a brisket would fit on the Ranger? How big of a brisket would fit on a Ranger? Not very big. Um, you can see this isn't a big space. So it would be pretty small. You could fit a brisket flat. I'm not a fan of cooking flats. I like how briskets cook whole with the fat in between the flat and the point, but you certainly could cook a flat on there if you want to do that. Or you'd have to have a pretty dang small brisket. Like you'd have to start with probably an eight pounder and trim it, um, or something like that. But you could do it. You just have to get a small one or really, really trim one. Will you ever make a coffee rub? Will I ever make a coffee rub? You'll see. Is the Wi-Fi worth the upgrade from the older Pro? Is the Wi-Fi worth it? Yes. So the Wi-Fi comes on the D2 grills. I love it for a couple reasons. The new D2 grills, they can't be beat. Like people are passionate about their grill brand, and whether they own, you know, they own all the competitors that I won't mention, and they think they're the best, and they say they own a, a Traeger. That's spoken like someone that's never owned a new Traeger, a D2 Traeger. So going to the DC motor uh, with all the power in there, I've never had one issue with a D2 grill, and I have all three models. Uh, but the Wi-Fi is amazing. I can leave, like in a little bit, you know, let's say I was still cooking here all night. I'm about to go watch my son play flag football. I could monitor the temperature of the meat and the temperature of the grill from my app. Um, and you all probably know this, but I have a recipe on the Meat Church YouTube called the Weekday Brisket. Go watch that shows you how to make a brisket. Uh, okay, so let's say it's not COVID time and you're driving to your office. Shows you how to make a brisket during the week while you're at work. And so that'll show you why I love uh, the Wi-Fi. Kate, if you want to take a picture of that, you can. We're gonna, Kate's going to pop in here to take a photo of this real quick. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to ask you a trivia question and we're going to eat. Take that in, inside. Like just in the fridge inside. You got me good with that? Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to tilt these. Um, I know these oysters may be hard for the camera to see, so I'll tilt those up here in just a second. 
All right, so while we're doing this, while we're getting this picture, let me tilt this up so you guys can see those a little bit better. I forgot about that. You feel free to come in here and take a picture. All right, let's ask a trivia question. So do you want to win a Traeger Ranger in this amazing flag? Who wants to win that? Here's your question. What were the name of the type of oysters that we cooked today? Put your answer in the comments. And we're going to actually um, announce the winner here in just a few minutes. So again, what was the name of this type of oyster? I told you I normally like to cook Texas Gulf oysters, but what are these? I said they're like my wife. That's the only hint you're going to get. All right, so let's go on to eating. Or do you have questions? Should I eat? I want to eat. Okay, let's eat. What am I going for first? Man, those look good. Okay, I'm going to go pig shot. And I hope they've cooled off by now. Be sure to take the toothpick out of it. It's so, this bacon, you know, the bacon's never going to be real crispy. That bacon is done. That's what I call a one-shotter. And trust me, you're not going to be able to eat just one. That's good. The bacon even got a little crispier than I thought it would, considering how thick it was. But it's a sausage. Man, so you could take the smokiness in the cream cheese. You've already got a little bit of southwestern flavor of the green chilies. We added our barbecue seasoning. Um, you know, put more cheese in it. Look, I'm a big fan of cheese. The only thing I like more than barbecue is cheese. Cheese, cream cheese, cottage cheese. Call me old. I don't care. Not, not yet. We don't. We got a winner. Chop in the we have a winner, but first, what we got? I'm telling you, I mean, it looks like a loaded baked potato. One thing I'll say about this, this is something that even oyster naysayers will love, so try it. Ah, that's good. I'm telling you, even an oyster, per, someone says they don't like oysters, just make them try one. All right. Man, all right. Super good. Um, personally, that barbecue butter, um, the, the sweet and heat, you get a little kick out of the sweet and heat sauce. It's got a, it's like an oyster with a bite. I love it. The green onion, like it's, it's, it, you know, I tried one raw. You saw that. It was really cool and crisp and briny and salty. And then with all this stuff we put in it, it, it finishes with a bite. Really good. Like makes it a lot more hearty. So I'm telling you, do this. Pick your favorite oyster. Make them. We've got a winner of the Ranger and the flag. And that's a cool flag. Even cooler grill. All right. So the question was, what type of oysters were these? The answer was Savage Blondes. And the first per I think it's first first name. The winner is? Ryan Fritch. How do you spell the last name? F-R-I-T-C-H. Ryan Fritch. F-R-I-T-C-H. I don't know Ryan. I don't know where Ryan lives, but congratulations, Ryan. You got a flag uh, and a ranger. Um, so Traeger will be in touch with you. Man, this was fun. They didn't think it'd take an hour, and it did. But that's just, you know, oh, wait, we got more questions. We've got a ton of questions. We got some on, questions. Hang on. Why? Mm. Why the bed of salt? We're going to ask questions. Okay. Why the bed of salt? You got to rest the oyster on something. So when they were raw, we had them on this bed of ice. It melts quick and you can't put too much ice in it or that water will go in top of the oysters. So by the time these oysters are done, um, this is going to be a bunch of water. Now you could do more ice. That's an option. But we're going to eat these now so we don't necessarily, you know, we grilled them. We don't have to have them cold anymore. So the bed of salt, it just gives you this, I mean, look, this thing won't sit up right on its own. If I took this oyster and set it right here, it's going to fall over usually. But so I set it in this bed, I can just plant it just like that. And it pre if you put them in neatly and you're careful with it, especially if you dress them somewhere else and then put them in here, it presents really, really, really pretty. And this was like half a box of kosher salt and they just look good. 
presentation in the Hold'em. What else? Yeah, bring the questions. Come on. When do the wild game recipes come out? When do the wild game recipes come out? We've got venison coming out. Uh, we've got a venison video dropping next week. Um, we've got elk coming right after that. And then I don't know where the rest is going to go, but we've got a lot coming in this fall. What's your favorite dessert to smoke? What's my favorite dessert to smoke? I hate to keep going back to this, but on meatchurch.com, We've got a smoked chocolate pecan cobbler. It's ridiculous. Do you cook on Traeger grills and comp? Do I took, cook on Traeger, Traeger grills and comp? Yes. I don't compete that much anymore. I'm not trying to be known as a guy with 400 grand championships. I'd rather spend my time sharing my passion for barbecue, barbecue with you guys. It's much more rewarding. Um, but over the last two years, uh, we finaled with some Traeger folks hit Memphis in May on ribs, and the Houston Rodeo on brisket on a Traeger. So, yeah, absolutely. As soon as we got top 10 on those meats, I mean, that tells me the flavor uh, is awesome that comes off of them. That's it. I'm going to eat these all night. All right. Appreciate you guys joining us. So here's a little uh, little wrap-up. So. Uh, Chad Ward and I are going to be live on Traeger Grills Instagram in 15 minutes. I'm actually going to my son's first flag football game, so I'm going to be taking it from there. Look a little different than this kitchen. But come over there. You can ask more questions, and Chad and I kind of wrap up. Like I said, I'm going to go back and try to answer any questions on the Facebook post and the YouTube video that didn't get answered live tonight. But again, be sure you follow Traeger's Instagram for all the game day content. And if you don't follow Meat Church on Instagram, I don't know what you're waiting on. So at Meat Church, um, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up. That's where you'll learn about our fall collection that's about to release. And that's where we will announce uh, our next product that's going to drop uh, in November. So anyway, really appreciate you guys coming out. I had fun making the smoked Paloma. Um, I love these pig shots and the grilled oysters, again, being my favorite. I'd love to see you guys make this and tag me and Traeger on Instagram or Facebook and let us know how it's going. Uh, there's nothing more rewarding than running into you down the road and you tell me you made this and, it, and your friend said it was like the best they'd ever had. That's why I do what I do. I'll be back in one month doing this again in November, uh, doing holiday stuff coming up. So next time you see me, we'll be doing Thanksgiving stuff that's always very popular. So thank you so much uh, for your hour tonight. Or if you're watching this down the road, thanks. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Y'all just stay right there. <laughs>